All right, what's up, guys? Um, right now it's April 2020, and everyone's stuck at home, so I figured why not kill some time and make a video. And today's video is going to be on something that, in my opinion, what is one of the most helpful things you can own in the RC hobby, and it's something that's going to cost less than 10 bucks, and that is this servo tester right here, combined with this four AA pack right here. Now, I haven't been in the hobby very long. I've been in the hobby for less than a year and a half, and I can't tell you how many times this thing has come in handy. So. Pretty important in my opinion, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So like I said, this whole combination cost me probably less than 10 bucks. Um, this was running for about five bucks. This is running about for a buck 50, I'm pretty sure. And I bought both those on AliExpress, and I will link both of them in the description below. Keep in mind, there are cheaper servo testers that look a lot like this. I would not recommend these. I uh, had a lot of problems with this. I'll show you in the video later on. But um, I would stick with this style of servo tester. And just as a disclaimer, um, this battery pack did not come with a JST plug installed. So I had to do that myself. So if you don't know how to connect JST plugs, I would learn how to do that first because that's going to be real important in the RC hobby. And you're going to want to pick up some JST plugs, which I'll probably link in the description below as well. And I will also link a pair of these, which is a pair of crimps that work for the JST connectors. So I bought these off Amazon. They were a little expensive at 20 bucks. Um, but you might be able to find them cheaper on AliExpress or something like that. But I'll link the ones that I bought in the description below. And then you guys can do the research for yourself if you want to find a cheaper one. So now on to the function of the servo tester as an actual servo tester. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on. And so this thing has three modes. Um, and one mode is going to be continuous testing and it just takes a servo and swings it back and forth. And you can change the speed of how fast it swings back and forth. As you can see right there, it's going extremely slow and it's just gonna go all the way left, all the way right and back and forth and back and forth. And all we do is turn up that knob and it's going to test it faster. Second mode is going to be manual mode. So then now you can swing it all the way left or swing it all the way right. And it tests the entire throw of that servo and you can test, put it where you want it. So it goes from 800, which is going to be all the way in one direction to 2200 which is all the way in the other direction and 1500 it's going to be right in the middle and if you want to center a servo that's when this thing comes in extremely handy all you do is go to the third mode and third mode is nothing but centered so if you want to center a servo you just put it on that third mode and it centers the servo and then what you do is you take that servo horn and put it on straight and that servo horn will be straight as possible. All right, so one thing I didn't mention is there is a second button. I was using that select button to choose all the modes, but there is a second button that says pulse width and that does change the pulse width. And I'm not exactly sure what that does, so I just don't mess with that button. But you might want to do a little bit of research because I did hear somewhere that if you do set the wrong pulse width with certain servos it could damage some of the electronics so you want to make sure you're using the right pulse width with the right servo like i said i've never had any issues with it i always just left it to where it was set out of the box and i just haven't messed with it but keep that in mind but i did want to show you guys this other servo tester which i said is not nearly as good and i'm going to show you guys why right now so it's got the same three settings where one setting is going to be manual mode another one's going to be centered as you can see it's not going to be adjustable by the uh, knob and the third setting is going to be automatic but this one does not change its speed so it just automatically tests it at that same exact speed i can change the knob and it's not going to do anything the problem with this one is even with just one servo as you can see, when these other two lights light up, that means the servo tester is struggling. Maybe it's got too much of a load on it, but try to do it fast. And as you can see, when that lights up, the servo stops spinning and it's like, it's, it's struggling. Now let's try adding a second servo to that. And 
And as you can see, it's already jittering and making weird noises. And as you can see, it just, as I turn the knob all the way right and then left, it's jittering. They're not doing the same thing at the same time. And as you can see, it's just having lots and lots of trouble. So this thing is essentially no good. The more voltage you throw at it, or the more servos you throw at it, the, uh, the less it functions. So as you can see, it's just sitting there jittering. I'm not even touching it. So yeah. Now let's try this one with four servos. All right, so as you can see, you got four servos connected to the HGA tester now. And um, it was a little difficult getting all those JST connectors crammed into uh, this left side of the servo tester. But as you can see, we got it all to fit. And uh, let's test her out. see everything works just fine with four servos connected to the battery tester so this is clearly much much better of an option compared to this one and another thing is when all four servos are connected or when you have any two servos connected you can compare those two servos and see how fast they are compared to each other as you can see these two little servos are going to be a little bit faster than these two bigger servos the bigger servos are going to be more powerful but if you want to test them side by side you can just look at these two, crank it all the way to 800, and then you can crank it all the way to the right and see which one finishes first. As you can see, this one was done pretty quickly and this one's still spinning, so it's a good way to test how fast your servos are. But as you can see, this servo tester has absolutely no problem running four servos off that battery pack when this one just struggles with even one high-powered servo. But now that we've gone over this servo tester as an actual servo tester, let's see what else it can do. And one thing it can do is test, help you test out to see if a motor or ESC is going to be good. Now, keep in mind, if you want to test a motor or ESC, you're going to either, you, even if you need, want to just test the motor, you're still going to need both the motor, motor and ESC to test out either. And also, you're going to need a battery to power that ESC and the motor, so... Yes, let's go ahead and plug the ESC uh, servo cable into the tester. And let's go ahead and turn on, let's go ahead and put that to 1500. So what we're gonna wanna do is set it to 1500 so that it doesn't start out with a signal. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And we're not getting any power here. So, I'm thinking this ESC may be dead. All right, so after messing around for a little bit, got it all figured out. So, what happened was, obviously, an ESC uh, cable acts as the power source to a receiver, so I did not need that four battery pack connected into this servo tester with the ESC connected as well, because that's just two power sources, so that was probably preventing this one from turning on. I've actually tested... Sorry. That was probably what was preventing this one from turning on. And I've actually tested that one with this now as well without the four battery pack and it works fine. So as you can see, now we can test out the motor and we want to get to about 1500 for it to go to zero. And if we go higher than that, the motor's going to go forward. Now we go to 1500 and then go backwards. It's going to go to reverse. Obviously, it's going to go a little bit slower in reverse than it does in forward, but that's just due to the ESC settings. But yeah, so works pretty well, and if you want to test out to see if a motor or ESC work, and you just don't have a transmitter or receiver readily available, and you don't feel like digging around into one of your car's receiver boxes to try to plug it in to see if it works, um, this thing works just fine.
All right, so I just want to show you guys that this battery pack alone comes in quite handy when it comes to dealing with anything with receivers, testing them out or binding them or whatever. And just to show you guys, I've got this brand new FSA3 receiver that I'm going to bind to this FSGT5 Fly Sky transmitter. This is an excellent transmitter, by the way. It's a six channel transmitter. And I did make a video um, on it, so I will link that in the description below as well. But for right now, we're going to be attaching this little cheaper three-channel receiver that is compatible with the GT5. We're going to bind that to the transmitter. And to do that, first off, we're going to need to put power to this receiver. And normally what you would do is you would put a... ESC into channel 2 and that's what would power this receiver so we're going to go ahead and take this and plug it into channel 2. Now it doesn't really matter what channel you put the power to as long as it's not the bind channel because we're going to need to put the bind plug in bind, cha bind channel but just for just considering the fact that we usually put power to channel 2 we're going to go ahead and plug it into channel 2 and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our receiver and right now it's set to model number one and that is connected to my outcast so i'm going to want to change that to number two is connected to my 12428 and we're going to set it to model number three which isn't connected to anything all right now that we've got that on model three we're going to turn it off and then we're going to plug the bind plug into the receiver then we're going to turn the power on and as you can see now it is blinking it's got power and it should be in bind mode now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the bind button on the transmitter and turn it on and now it should be bound to model three now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the transmitter i'm going to unplug the bind plug and i'm going to plug in a servo into channel one now we're going to turn the transmitter back on, and you can already hear that it is bound. So, we have success. And uh, so, as you can see, that was pretty easy. You got a very simple power source to your receiver right here, and it's also going to work not just for binding the actual receiver, but in case you just already have a receiver bound and you want to make sure everything's working out. Uh, for example, we've got this one right here let's say you want to see if this receiver works we can go ahead and put power to it like so and then we can put that right there turn the power on and as you can see quick easy way of testing a receiver and transmitter to make sure they work so as you can see that 4AA pack comes in as an excellent solution for power source when it comes to receivers uh, so you don't have to go through all of your old boxes of old stuff try to find an old ESC to plug into a lipo to plug into the receiver for power or if you don't have an extra ESC lying around then you'd actually have to crack into one of your <coughs> receiver boxes of your existing RCs unplug that ESC and then plug it into a receiver just to test it out to see if it works or to give it power to bind it to a transmitter. Instead of doing all that, it's just a lot easier just to have one of these little battery packs handy. So another good thing about this four battery pack is obviously when it's connected to the servo tester, you can you have four open slots and you can use those slots to test things like, you know, lights and fans. As you can see, turn it on and everything is working so nice quick easy way of testing lights and fans and honestly they make these in a four triple a pack as well and you can also buy these and put them in your vehicle and use them as alternate power sources for lights and fans if you don't want to run those off of your receiver like in my Axial Yeti, I have a three triple a pack and I have that connected to a splitter so I have three separate lights running off of one pack as you can see in my axial yeti right here i just reach back here kind of hard to find that switch but once i turn it on you can see the lights down there up there and the tail lights are all connected to that switch so i can easily turn it on and off just with a flick of a switch
and that way I can have the vehicle running with the lights on or without the lights on and it's all controllable by switch all right so that just about wraps it up hopefully you guys learned something and hopefully you guys pick up one of these little servo testers and these battery packs i'm telling you guys it's a huge help when it comes to the hobby um so much more convenient than having to plug into a receiver or power up an esc so sorry for the long video i'm sure i'm sure we're running at like 20 minutes now but uh like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, if you guys got any questions or comments, go ahead and post down below, and thanks for watching.